Hello and welcome to Staying Alive. This is a panel show about the ageing population. Yes, unfortunately, it happens to us all. I'm David, he's Gordon, she's Leanne, and he's Greg. Hi. Today's topic we're going to talk about, which isn't a very pleasant one, but it's been so much in the media mm -hmm. in, in recent time, uh, domestic violence. Now, Greg, what's your role in our community? Well, I head the anti-violence project in the uh, LGBTI community. More the LGBT than the I, because there aren't many I people that um, are, are engaged with our community yet. As we embrace them, they will be more. And uh, we, we look at relationship violence, family violence, we look at uh, intimate partner violence, street harassment, and prejudice motivated violence and crime. So we address those needs, capture people's experiences, and hopefully get them to talk to police and talk to other uh, related third parties that can help them along the way. And is it coming up more and more? And you know, like, what are the police telling you? Because I know you, you get heavily involved with, with them. Well, for us, for if you look at our last seven years of stats, 9% um, of people reporting to us on prejudice motivated violence and crime ignored that tick and went on to family violence and ticked that box and said that was an issue for them. Almost 10% of people um, weren't didn't have a problem with street violence or prejudice crime, it was actually family violence. But when you dug further amongst all the people, 25% of people expressing problems around violence had it happened in their own homes. So that suggests that family violence is not just underreported, yep. but it's happening and it's quite pervasive in our community. Yep. What about you, Leanne? Again, it would rear its head a bit in, it's in it's your... It's switchboard with the calls that we get. Yep. Yeah, it does. Um, we get a few calls, but it's often people don't define what's going on for them in a relationship as family violence or intimate partner violence. Or is it hard to talk about it? I think um, it's hard to talk about anyway, yep. um, but I also think some definitions around family violence and domestic violence have been very much in the sort of heterosexual world with um, male perpetrator mm -hmm. um, and when we look at two men together or, or two women, um, a trans partner, that they don't see that it's necessarily that. It's a relationship issue that they're having of which verbal or physical abuse is, is part of that. So mm. I think we need a little bit of community awareness within our community of really what we're talking about. Because yeah. it's obviously mm. happening. Because we don't, we don't feel that, because uh, it's not reported as much in, in uh, the media at this stage, is it? Well, we, we hear the high sex. end in our community, it's the high end. If you, if you go back 10 years, the, the four or five murders that have happened where a partner has murdered his other partner, or his significant other, um, and they've been family violence incidents, we've only heard those because that's mm -hmm. the ones that tip over and yep. become a media spectacle. Yep. But right. we don't hear the pervading family violence existing in relationships. Mm. Gordon, what about you? Because you're part of Vintage Men. Mm -hmm. uh, does it ever get spoken about in, in that realm? I would say never. Oh, OK. Never, never gets spoken about because I don't... Uh, whether it, it has happened in a previous life and they don't talk about it, I don't know, because we never ask questions about that unless people are forthcoming mm. and sort of say, this is what happened to me, you know. But I've been a victim of violence, but that was not in the home. But mm. it was mm. a, a violent attack and I lost, nearly lost the sight of one eye. Oh. But that was way back in the 60s, yeah. you know, when it was... That uh, was it, you uh, know. Yeah, poof to bashing poof to was, bashing, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was yeah. shocking. And, what uh, but it, it's... Um, so, but I, I don't know much about um, family violence because I come from a very, very happy family. We, we grew up, the whole family grew up and my, and my actual family that I have now, my sister and husband and their children, it's just, it's just all, mm. no, there's never mm. any thing about it. They all get on so well yeah. together, there's yeah. never anything there. But I think that family violence has always happened, but it's gone underreported, but now it's come to the fore, uh, which absolutely. is a damn good thing yeah. because it needs to be reported and it needs to be fixed and mm. it needs to be looked at. Yeah. Well, I know of a, um, a person, a, you know, like sort of a 50 plus person that had moved from uh, Perth to, to Melbourne for a better life and, and whatever, picked up with a, a partner and um, uh, and a y much younger guy, and uh, he would get drunk and beat him up. He would come home being out partying because the mm -hmm. older guy didn't want to go out partying and come home and beat him up, and he was staying with him. He mm -hmm. wasn't making the move, and it was people getting actually angry with him that turned him around, and he eventually asked him to move out, but you know, like, a terrible situation. Yeah. Well, there's a young couple in Melbourne, young couple that are um, uh, we're working with at the moment through the Anti-Violence Project and six times one has attempted to leave the other and will return back to that relationship. 
Um, there's an economic tie that binds them. There's, um, they're in one place. Uh, the difficulty of separating their finances now is such that they tend to return. Yep. Now, that victim isn't always the victim. That victim has also been a perpetrator in that relationship. So in gay relationships, we can have people that are both it's victims and perpetrators. Mm -hmm. It's not as clearly defined. Right. Yeah. And we don't have the resources. We don't have the places to refer gay men for a relationship and intimate partner violence to work through those issues. Uh, a, a male victim in a gay relationship can't go and sit with a room full of female victims from heterosexual relationships. There's, there's very little about, for them to talk yeah, about their that's issues. Right, that's right. And we don't have the referrals if people needed to get into safety. If they're in very, very dangerous situations yeah. and need to get out on the spot, we really have got mm. very limited places we can send people to. Yeah, so it, it is a very sort of sticky situation, this one, isn't mm. it? And But you know, like the, the one thing is that if you are in this situation, you've got to make some sort of move, don't you? You know, like it's easy to think, oh, is it just me? You know, like what's the situation? But that's a very hard thing to do sometimes. Oh, you know, I know. It's, it's very, very difficult, especially if you were, um, you know, in a say a, a gay relationship and you've got children. Yep. Uh, in that relationship, mm -hmm. and somebody's being doing the bashing around. Uh, what do you do? You know, it's it becomes almost like the straight situation where the oh. wife can't leave because she's got children and Very it's financial similar. and all this happens so how do you do it you the only thing you can do is report it and hope something can be done well we do have david though we have a, a ground changer we have a royal commission's royal commission to family violence have brought down 227 recommendations mm. and for the first time lgbti is up there exactly equally in the mix we're not invisible anymore and the government have committed to all those recommendations being put into practice and that will benefit our community as well. So where's the money coming from for that? They, they have to find it. They, they have, have to. Right. They've okay. committed to finding it in this budget and the ongoing budgets. And with a bit of luck, it'll be bipartisan. It'll survive any future change in government. And right. we'll have some uh, some big changes around family and intimate partner violence. Right. And not before time. No, and not before right. time. That's and please do something about it. If you're in that situation, just don't take it. It's, it's not right. Anyway, run out of time again, like, like our last topic that we had the other week. So much more we could talk about there. So thanks for, for watching Staying Alive. He's Greg. She's, what's your name? Leanne. And what's your name? Fred. Fred. And Fred's saying goodbye, <laughs> and so is Gordon, and so is David. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.